Hey guys, Trevor here, back with episode 5 of r slash pro revenge. Today, we've got another three stories waiting for you. The first one is going to be about an entitled mom who thinks it's okay not to pay her landscaper after he did the work. Second, we got a pastor who is treating his employees like utter garbage. And third, we got a gas thief who decides to accidentally steal some diesel. Yeah, not a good idea. And then of course, we've got our bonus subreddit for the day. So make sure you stick around for that as well because it's gonna be a good one. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Entitled mom thinks it's okay not to pay me. Hi, I just remembered this encounter I had with an entitled parent about last summer. Backstory, I had posted in another subreddit about my working experience in a fast food restaurant. In some of my days off, I would do side jobs, which was laboring, cutting grass, replacing washing machines and dryers, moving the water heater, and working on building projects. This happened on a Saturday. As I'm cutting my boss's yard, I guess you can call him my boss. He's not the one at the restaurant, but he's been taking me in and supervising me on a lot of jobs. Really great guy. EP is entitled parent, M is me. Although I'm just gonna say me, it's just more convenient. It was a Saturday, and I was getting ready to work on my side job. I had already the whole day planned out. I was going to cut the yard, then we were going to pick up and replace his stove. Then after that, we were going to head over to his house project, where a client was adding an addition to their house. When I got there, I surveyed the yard to see how I wanted to cut it. But I also noticed that his neighbor's yard was covered with overgrowth. I get started, and as I'm about halfway done, EP comes out to me. EP, hi there, you're doing a pretty good job. Could you try and do something with ours, if you don't mind? I didn't mind the extra work. I love landscaping. Also, who was going to say no to extra money? Or at least I thought I was getting extra money. Me. Sure. Let me finish up with this one and I'll be right over. EP. Oh, but I'm in kind of a hurry. Can you just do it now? Me. Ma'am, it would be against my nature to move on to another yard when I'm not even finished with this one. I'm working on. Bear with me. I'll be over soon. She impatiently looks at me and says, okay. Keep in mind, I also had to weed it, edge, and blow the yard after I cut it. So halfway done meant I just got done with the lawnmower. My boss doesn't really have a big yard, but it's sizable and somewhat open. There wasn't much spots to weed it as the lawnmower could pretty much get most spaces. As I'm starting on that, EP comes over. EP, you're done over here. Now come over and start on my yard. Me, I'm done with the mower, but I still need to detail the yard. EP, I told you that I need to be somewhere, and I need you to start now. Me, you can go wherever it is you need to go, but before you do, I need to discuss a quick payment plan. I charge yards based on size and the amount of work I need to put into it. She has a sizable yard too, and as I mentioned earlier, it was riddled with overgrowth. So my first asking price was 200. I normally charge 50 or 60 for a normal size yard, and sometimes 70 if it's overgrown. But her yard was pretty big, and I only had a push mower with me. And it's not like she didn't have the money. Her garage had a brand new Mercedes and a Porsche Cayenne. EP. Okay, how much? Based off all the vegetation, my asking price is 200 200 You know it doesn't cost that much, you scam artist. Me. The size of your yard alone is 100 you have vines growing on the side of your house, and I can barely see the patio and walkway. Not to mention, bushes are now covering the windows, and those tree limbs need to be cut. Slim trees. EP. Well, I'm not giving you the money right now. I need to see your work. That was alright with me, and I usually didn't take money until after I've worked. I also told her that I charge for the size and the amount of work. She then leaves, and I finish my boss's yard. I move over to her yard and start working. The grass was so thick my mower kept getting clogged, but I managed to push through it. About a few hours after cutting the grass, I finally got to detailing. Thankfully, the vines on the house weren't so bad to the point where they were on the roof, and the bushes had to be trimmed a certain way as to not to block the windows. I finally trimmed the tree branches, and that's when EP comes back from whatever it was she was doing. I had cut the last tree limb when she comes over. EP, pretty good job. How long did it take? Me. It took several hours for the yard alone. I'm now asking for 275. As I mentioned earlier, 
I charged based on the size and the amount of work put in, and I had put in a whole lot. EP, I thought your price was 200. Me, it was at first, but now I'm asking for 275. My mower clogged several times and almost shut down on me completely. Also, I had to put in extra to get this yard presentable. EP storms off. I guess to get the money. About five minutes pass, and I see her son walk out. He asked his mom could he have some money, and it looked like she gave him all the money that I was supposed to get paid with. I walk over, and she says this. EP, what do you want? Me, the money you owe? I saw you hand it all over to your son. EP, so? He's my child, and he asked for some money. I can pay you with a gift card. She really pulls out a $5 gift card to a department store. I don't think I've ever felt more insulted than I did here. Me, are you serious? EP, yes. Now you can take it or not get paid at all. Me, we discussed a payment plan and you even agreed to pay me the 200. Now all I did was charge an extra 75 because I told you that I charged based on the size and the amount of work I put in. EP, well, you're already getting paid on the first yard. She had the audacity to be determined not to pay me for the work I've done and then try to justify it by saying I'll get paid for the other yard. I don't work for free unless you're a close friend or a family member in need. She tries to ignore me by going back inside the house and staying there. I was determined that I was going to get what I was owed. I started thinking and I got the idea to mess up her yard since she didn't want to pay me. I grabbed my weed eater and ran it in the dirt. For those of you who don't know, a weed eater will tear everything up from the root if you don't put it down in the dirt. I had messed up a few sections of the yard before she came back out to see what was going on. She lost her mind when she saw what I was doing. EP, WTF are you doing to my yard? Me, since you don't want to pay me properly for the work I've done, I'm going to make it look worthy of a $5 gift card. EP. If you don't stop, I'm calling the police, and I'm telling him you're trespassing and destroying my property. Me. Go ahead. And you can also tell them how you didn't want to pay for someone else's labor. EP looks confused for a moment, in a way that's basically slave labor, which is illegal. Like I said, I don't work for free unless you're one of my close friends or a family member in need. She calls the police anyways. An officer shows up, but to my surprise, he's one of my regular customers. We know each other pretty well, and the officer told her about my work ethic and professional work, and then he asked why she didn't pay me. She gave some BS excuse, how we talked on a much lower price. He asked for her ID, which turns out she's been avoiding several fines to the HOA, Homeowners Association, because her yard had so much overgrowth. So on top of paying me $275, she had to pay an additional $300 because her yard was not up to par with safety standards. Don't rob me, people. This story had a little bit of an entitled parent sprinkled in there. But one thing I've never understood about, I guess, choosing beggars or entitled parents is how if you're going to be selfish, you're not going to pay or you're going to pay a smaller amount. Why are you always so demanding? Like you're the first, everyone else has to stop what they're doing, and you need to do what I want you to do right now. It's always baffled me. You'd think they'd be more humbled if they know that they're going to pay less or pay nothing. Church camp is hell. I see what you did there, very punny. So a few years ago, I was a worker for this Baptist summer camp not far from my home. Let's just call it what it is, hell. I've been a devoted staff member for three years, even managing the concession stand for one of them. I was a hard worker, constantly jumping in to do jobs no one really wanted, like trash, pulling weeds, restocking the vending machines, etc. On top of that, I was generally the favorite staffer for the kids that rolled through the camp. Now camp policy was for the staff to live on campus while they were working, which was for most staff a weekday only ordeal. Those of us that worked weekends had to request it. I did this frequently as I genuinely loved the work I was doing. I even worked the off season as much as I could. Midway through my summer in hell, I ended up with a really bad ear infection. So I took my allotted week off to recover. Toward the end of the week, I was asked to be called on for the weekend. I didn't have my driver's license at the time, and my family was going three and a half hours out of town for the weekend, so I requested to stay on campus in case I was needed. I was told this is not a problem. That was incorrect. 
It should also be said that my father had my house key as he had lost his. Two hours after arriving on Friday, I'm called down to the dining hall where the week staff was having their final meeting to receive paychecks and debriefing. I think nothing of this. I come walking into the dining hall, thrilled to see my companions for the first time in a little over a week, to find the owner of the camp. We'll call him Phil, and I'd also like to add that this man is the senior pastor of the church. He's also racist, sexist, homophobic piece of human garbage that thinks he can get away with murder because he's old and well off, sitting with the entire staff. Phil asked me to come over and sit with him, and I oblige. As far as I'm aware, he was pretty fond of me, so I wasn't concerned. I was wrong to think that way. The following conversation unfolded in front of roughly 30 of my coworkers. Phil, insert my name here. What are you doing here, pal? Me. I was asked to be on call, sir. I was told I could stay on campus since my family's out of town for the weekend. Phil. I see. Well, we don't need you. You can go home. Me. I actually can't. My family's out of town. My dad has my house key, and I don't drive. Phil. I'm sorry to hear that. You'll have to find somewhere to go then. But you can't stay here. Me. Very calm through this whole ordeal. Phil. I don't have anywhere I can go. Phil. Again. I'm sorry to hear that, but that's not really my problem, is it? You should have thought this one through. So at this point, the entire room has gone silent. All of my coworkers are watching in shock, completely unsure how to react to this. Phil notices. Phil. You know what? I'm sorry. You can stay here, insert my name here, but I'm going to have you work hard, and you'll be working for the housing alone. I won't be paying you, and you'll have to figure food out. He then looks at the staff, who are even more horrified now, and addresses them. Them, Am I being unfair? Do y'all think this is unreasonable? I'm fuming. My face is probably visibly red, and I'd love nothing more than to explode. But I do my best to stay calm through this whole thing. I say, I'll figure something out, and I leave without another word. That night was spent sleeping on the side of the road, just off property. The next day, I start forming my plan. My parents are aware of the situation and want desperately to come get me, but I refuse this. I spent Saturday night hiding in my coworker's room because they were checking my room for me like I was some sort of criminal, and Sunday night, I sleep in my room because at this point, I really don't give a damn. Monday morning, I make my way into the dining hall, out of uniform, and take a seat. When the whole staff is present, I stand. It was my day to deliver our devotional, so nobody really thought anything of it. My speech was as follows. My fellow staff members, you are all present Friday to witness the way I was treated by our loving and fearless leader, Phil. I'm sure many of you were uncomfortable through the course of our conversation, but I want you all to be assured that I got along just fine. Did I resort to sleeping on the side of the road like an animal? Yes. Did I hide on campus the rest of the weekend, having to bed beg someone to sneak food to me? Yes again. But that's all right. I must ask you though, if Phil has no problem treating me this way, after giving three years of my life to this campus, how do you think he's going to treat you? He was more than happy to put someone on the street for a weekend, knowing I had nowhere to grow, go, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that doesn't seem very Christ-like to me. So endure his mistreatment as long as you want, but I think I've had enough. I quit, Phil. Screw you. I sincerely hope you rot in hell. With that, I walked out the door, with ten of my coworkers right behind me. The following week, I caught wind of another 15 quitting after enduring a half an hour of Phil crap-talking me to the staff. The camp was left with maybe six employees as a group of 850 campers was coming through. And honestly, I never felt so powerful. I really wish I could hear how it ended up with only six employees and 850 campers coming through. I've been to camp when I was a little kid, and even with a normal amount of employees, it was madness. It must have been a story in and of itself to hear how that ended up. Gas thief gets sweet justice. So there was a problem with someone stealing gas out of parked cars in our neighborhood. Both of my neighbors were hit on the same night. I was spared because I normally park in my garage. So I hatched my plan to find out who it was. I drive a Chevy Cruze. It's a pretty ordinary car, except for the fact that it runs on diesel, not gasoline. Next, I set up a ring camera. Finally, I park my car in the driveway and just wait. It takes three days for my car to get hit. I saw the video and just laugh as the guy siphons the fuel out and puts it in a red gas can. The next day after work, I told my neighbor what happened and he started laughing. There was a guy that lives down the block 
whose truck had to be towed with mechanical issues. He faced a huge repair bill after his son put diesel in the truck and drove it around town. Apparently, his son was using his truck and stealing fuel instead of paying for it. TLDR, thief steals gasoline from cars, I park my diesel car outside, and thief causes huge repair bill on his dad's truck because he didn't want to pay for gas. I really hope you told the dad what the son was doing because not only right now does he think he's an idiot for putting diesel in his car, but hopefully he whips his ass black and blue for actually stealing from other people. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's last three pro revenges. Now we're going to go straight on into the bonus of the day, which is going to be r slash facepalm. Hope you enjoy it. See you in a bit. When you're so anti-government that you pay extra money to the government to show the government you don't support them. Apparently, stick it to the man means stick extra money in their pockets. Who knew? Why are you photographing trains? Do you work for the rail company? Are you the media? It's a hobby. There's a ton of people who do it for fun, not just here in the US, but around the world. So it's a hobby. Why can't you enjoy it in the privacy of your own home? Because trains don't run through my house. Hey man, if you can do that from the privacy of your own home, you got a lot of bigger issues to worry about. Also, that's a very strange hill to die on. I don't know why you get upset over someone taking pictures of a railroad, but okay. Why are Nintendo codes so long? Guys, my code doesn't work anymore. Oh, you poor trusting sap. All right, guys, it's going to wrap it up today. I hope you enjoyed today's r slash pro revenge video, and I'll see you around for the next one. Peace out.